Dr. Lori. This is What's It Worth with Dr. Lori. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, how, you how doing? are you? Great. Good, good. Thanks for coming. Where do you live? Uh, Lititz. Lititz, not too far. <laughs> Lovely Lititz. That's so much fun. The Wilbur Chocolate Factory. That's what I think of in Lititz. And of course, wonderful downtown Lititz. Um, tell me what you brought. This is an inkwell. This is an inkwell. And, and we'll, we'll prove it to you. Here are the inkwells. Put ink the ink in there. I put guess. the ink in here, right? All right, I'm going to leave one of those out for a moment. Inkwell. So this and, belong, and the blotter. And the blotter, mm -hmm. right? Which we don't yeah. use that much now. No. Right? <laughs> and tell me about your inkwell. Did you purchase it? Was it a gift? Was it handed down the family? Family heirloom? This what? actually belongs to my dad. Belongs to your dad. He is 86 years old. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> and I know he was like, You're not selling this. No, 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 no. we're not. We're just no, we just want to get some more people. information. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this was given to him by uh, his aunt. She was from Argentina. Okay. And he kind of remembers when he was around 18 years old. This was a gift. A gift and, from the aunt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she was very proud of this. Right. She was a huge follower of Avita, Eva Peron. Oh, Eva Peron, the mm -hmm. first lady of Argentina, of course. Yes. And died very young, died at 33. Right? Yeah. She lived 1919 to 1952. Avita Peron, mm -hmm. the first lady of Argentina. They don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> you remember it. All right. So, so, so she we, was a fan? She, she, oh, huge, huge. When she was huge. really sick, my mom tells me that she even. Uh, waited in line to to get blood oh yeah blood. well she, she suffered huge. yeah um, and she cared for of course the laborers she oh, cared yeah. for women's rights she was able to uh work with you know the suffrage movement in argentina she's mm -hmm. a very important political figure and her husband of course the president of argentina duarte so, yeah. right so juan we're duarte. Oh, juan. yes yeah. so we're not sure if uh, they had a huge auction and we don't know if this happened after she died in 52 okay. or after he went into exile in 55. okay there was an auction in 52 there was an auction after of course they were in exile yes okay so so you don't know when your it family was either got 52 it 52 or 55. my dad thinks did they purchase he was 18 it? At, at the auction did they purchase it in argentina yes because she was from argentina she, li she lived there okay my dad uh, lived in Uruguay all right and this was a gift she came to visit and she was very proud and this is for you and it's been in the family since then so do you have any documentation that it belong that it came from the auction of Eva Eva Perón we do not if she did she didn't give it to my dad so okay now not. this could be found I mean basically we could research this and find what was at the auction and see whether or not there might be a photograph of this particular object mm. as it was sold at the auction those records exist, it's just finding them and, okay. and matching up that research information. And that's what appraisers do. They find the actual research information. So let's look at the object and see what the object can tell us. First of all, you know, it's very interesting when you have something that belonged to a famous person, right? So this, of course, is part of a desk set. It would have had a large blotter, right? It would have had this blotter, which is for the ink, so you can blot out the XX ink when you write a letter. Yeah. It, of course, has the ink wells. But when you have something that's from a famous person, what's on the desk is relatively important. So, for example, even the desk itself might be important. I appraised Thomas Jefferson's writing desk. And because it was his writing desk, of course, it's going to be worth much more money than the same antique writing desk that didn't belong to him. So if we can document that Ava Perone had this in her possessions, among her possessions at one time in her life, that would be wonderful. So maybe we find a photograph that has her at a desk with this, maybe mm -hmm. in, of course, um, you know, the main home of the president and the first lady. It, you, you don't know what you might find until you start to look. So first of all, there are a couple of things that we're going to see. This particular piece would, fits right inside, and this particular piece, of course, is for the ink well. So you would put the ink in here. And they're missing the areas where the ink actually would be covered. So you notice mm. that there's an indentation here? Okay. There would have been, again, a piece, probably of glass, that would cover the ink so the ink doesn't dry out. And there's room for that, a domed piece, with the dome underneath. Do you see okay. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this would cover up. You'll notice, too, that this piece is bronze. This particular piece is cast. These areas here are so the pens can sit. So you have pens that you would dip into the ink, and you notice oh. these grooves or these indentations are where, of course, the pen would actually sit. So you're looking at that. Notice, too, the, what's called a quatrefoil, or four elements here, sort of like a four-leaf clover, and then the step pattern that goes down, which dates the piece to about the 1930s or 1940s. Now, 1946 to 1952 is when, of course, she is the first lady of Argentina. Mm -hmm. So it could have been a piece in that time period just looking at the forms. It's called art moderne. 
Art modern is a, a time period or an art historical movement. Art modern is an art historical movement in the 1940s, and it ends about the early part of the 1950s, so it would make sense that she would have had the most interesting piece of the time. The style, um, of course, of this is about the 1940s, but to have these types of pieces, as I said earlier, start as early as the 1930s. So that's what you're looking at here. Notice, too, that you have some nice stone here. And then you see this? There's a piece of, you see that there's like a, um, a nail sticking out? This particular piece would have been a, a, la, a round rondelle. So it would have looked like this for the decoration, so it would continue the decoration, but that's been lost. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's what you have here, because you're wondering, you're holding this up and you're saying, wow, I just scratched my hand on that <laughs> nail, right? Okay, right? But basically it had this here, but now it's gone. And the idea there was so you could actually have a good grip on the blotter as you blot the ink. So pretty nice. Very, very high quality materials, which says to me that it isn't your run of the mill ink set or desk set. So that's one of the things that you're looking at. And also it's in beautiful condition. It's very possible that this particular marble actually matched marble mm. of a desk or another set. There are probably other pieces to the set too. So you want to think about that. Maybe they only had the opportunity to sell a certain pieces or maybe your aunt gave some to different parts of the family. Maybe. That's possible too. So what did it mean to your family to have something that might have belonged to Ava Perón? Oh, my father was always very proud of, of this piece. Did he tell everybody? Oh, sure. When he came in, he said, oh, come and look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting for a family. You want to try to hand that down? Oh, sure. I, and one time I did drop the little ink. So let me, oh, 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 and he went crazy when you oh, dropped yeah. it. Oh, yeah, so you're I like, never allowed to like, touch Marilyn, it. what did you do? can't touch that. I <laughs> Don't touch that. I almost <laughs> broke it. Okay. Well, it's interesting because let me give you some reference points for other items that were um, owned by Evita Perón or Eva Perón. Um, for example, she had at auction her ottoman, which sold for about $1,500, a footstool, <laughs> like anybody else's footstool, but because it belonged to her, it was worth a little bit more than it would normally. Also, a pin. There was a pin that was actually handset colored gemstone of the blue and the white of, of course, Argentina, Argent the Argentinian flag, and that sold for nearly $1 million, <laughs> a piece of jewelry from her collection where if it didn't belong to Ava Perón, probably would have been worth somewhere around maybe seventy-five dollars or $80,000. So you start to see what celebrity collectible does. When you have a celebrity collectible or something that belonged to a famous person, the, the value can go up, 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 up. And that's what's going to happen here. Assuming that this particular piece can be traced to Ava Perón, and we can document that with a photograph, with documentation, with an auction record, whatever it might be, this collection, which would be only two pieces of a set that probably had at least five pieces, okay? So we only have two of the five pieces. You're probably looking at about $5,000. If we can prove it was hers. If we can't prove it was hers, the set is worth about $250, but dates again to the middle years of the 20th century. Oh, wow. Are you nice. surprised? Yes. Yes. Wow. So we probably can do a little bit of digging, and now with the beauty of the internet, you probably can actually even find many of those pictures of her. Most of the pictures of her that we all see remind us of all of those movies and, and stills of the great, of course, um, of the great filmmakers about Eva Perón. But basically, we see her sort of on that balcony. Mm -hmm. We see her all with the masses. We see everybody loving her kind of thing. But if you can get a picture of her in her private home, right, or at her work desk, and you could see something like this, then the value is going to be quite high. Wow, nice. Thanks so much. Okay. You gave us a good example of, again, a celebrity antique object. So thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my okay. pleasure. What a wonderful story. Okay. And all good wishes to your dad. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. I'm Dr. Lori. That's this episode of What's It Worth with Dr. Lori. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.